Hello, Professor Laird here, and welcome to the Summer One course for Introduction to Politics. This video, the first video for the course, we'll be talking about the syllabus in detail. And this will be the most important video in the entire class because it is extremely uh, vital for you to get plugged into the course correctly right off the bat and understand what is required of this course, particularly for this course, which is an online asynchronous course, which will not be self-paced. This is uh, very important. We're going to treat this class as I would if we were meeting on campus Monday through Thursday for an hour and 45 minutes every day. The only difference here is you'll have a much bigger window in which to re fulfill the requirements of the course, but it will be uh, handled on literally a daily basis that you will need to keep up. Uh, you're going to have to trust me on this. Uh, this is extremely important, and it is for your benefit to do this in order to do well in this course. Uh, the uh, problem with these online asynchronous courses is that it puts more burden on you to keep up, to participate in the course, to give this class a priority. And this is why I'm going to structure it this way so that people will be required to keep up, respond to the discussion forums on a daily basis so you'll be more prepared as we go. And uh, this is a six weeks condensed packed course. You're getting the exact same information in this course that you'd be getting in an entire semester course. So this is why it's going to be fast paced, condensed, and you'll have to keep up on a daily basis. So let's go through the syllabus. Okay, so this is, uh, again, Monday through Thursday is when the lectures will be posted. There'll also be a discussion forum posted each afternoon. You'll have a nine hour window between 12 noon and 9 p.m. in which to take just a few minutes and respond to that discussion forum in order to be counted present for that day. The best way to get a hold of me is through my email, rlaird at bergen.edu. If you go through Moodle, I may not get it as quickly, because, and sometimes it may not go to my email if you post something on Moodle, so go to my email if you need to get a hold of me. Video conferencing will be available for one-on-one -on -one conferences. And as I mentioned in my previous announcement, I'm going to have weekly video, short video conferences every Monday. We're shooting for 2 p.m. in this case, where I will send out a WebEx invitation link for you to enter the meeting. We'll just have a, a short meeting where we will talk about what's going to be happening that week, talk about um, what will be due that week, that sort of thing, so that everybody is uh, a little bit more interactive, plugged in to the course. This is a Introduction to Politics course, Basic Concepts, Methodologies of Political Science. We'll be talking about power, some elements of comparative politics, international politics, the, the concept of the state, different types of governments, forms of representation, and some methods of social science analysis. So we'll be getting a kind of a broad general overview of politics and political science in general, but it will be fairly sophisticated overview. So you will want to give this class a priority, read the material, watch the lectures, keep up. The textbook for the course is Power and Choice, 15th edition by Shively. And you want to get that in as quickly as possible. My lectures, for the most part, come directly from this textbook. It's a very good textbook that's looking at the introduction to political science. And I also have been teaching this for a long time, and I have supplemental material that I add to the lectures here and there as well. Everything will be posted on Moodle. Everything will be handled through Moodle. Lecture notes, videos, quizzes, supplemental articles, reading assignments, all posted on Moodle. You'll need to check Moodle every single day. You'll need to check your school email every single day for those announcements that I'm telling you what's going to be happening that day. In addition, you want to keep up with current events on politics and government through credible news sources. This will be helpful in addition to just uh, being 
a little bit better informed as to what's going on out in the world. It will also give you ideas on what you want to write your paper about. We'll get into that here in a few minutes, but a paper is also required for the class. Another thing that we will be stressing in this class is how to access the library databases, particularly for peer-reviewed academic journals. This is where scientific studies are published on all fields of science. I use these peer-reviewed, I refer to these peer-reviewed academic journals so often that I have created an acronym for them, PROJ, that uh, kind of indicates how important they're going to be. I will uh, bring you along incrementally on this, post videos on why they are important, how to find them in the databases, how to cite them, because they will be the most important sources for your paper. Okay, now as far as participation in the course, this is extremely important because one of the biggest problems we're having with these online courses is students not keeping up. They feel like that they can just poke their head into the class every now and then and say, hey, what's been going on? Can I catch up on stuff? No, it's not going to work that way. Students are uh, failing these classes miserably because they are not keeping up. This is not a self-paced course. I will make this as interactive as I possibly can on a daily basis. The difference, of course, is that you'll have a much bigger window on that during that day in order to uh, take care of a few uh, basic assignments. And you will need to access Moodle and check your school me email every single day. As I said, the video lectures and a discussion forum that will be posted following that will be posted every Monday through Thursday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, four days a week, we'll be having class just like we would if this class was meeting on campus for an hour and 45 minutes each day. Once I post the discussion forum, they will be posted by noon. The deadline to respond to the discussion forum will be 9 p.m. each evening, Monday through Thursday. The videos will be posted typically by about 8 o'clock in the morning. So literally, you'll have 13 hours in, to, in which to watch a 30-minute video. Then, the, as I said, the discussion forum will be posted around noon. So what that means is that you'll have a nine-hour window in which to enter a discussion forum and re take a few minutes to respond to the question on that discussion forum. So listen to what I'm saying. A nine-hour window in which to spend a few minutes in which to respond to that discussion forum. And if you cannot find a few minutes within that nine-hour window, then you're not putting any priority into the class, and I would not recommend that you take the class. It's that simple. If you don't keep up, you're not going to do well in the class. I will be taking attendance uh, in that manner uh, as far as the uh, responses to the discussion forums. Uh, nine o'clock uh, deadline passes. The uh, We move on to the next day. So attendance will be taken when you respond to the discussion forum after you watch the video lecture. Failure to respond by that 9 p.m. deadline will result in an absence, just as if you missed that class on, in, on campus. Just as what I would on, on campus, I would be passing out an attendance sheet and taking roll every day. And just as I would in the classroom, if you're absent, that's five points deducted for each absence from your attendance grade. Your attendance grade is 15% of your total grade. We'll get into the grade breakdown here in a few minutes. Note that a discussion forum response could also have points deducted for failing to follow instructions or failing to watch the video lecture before responding. You have to watch the video first before you respond. Students are required to watch the entire video lecture before responding to the discussion forum. And I would highly recommend that you take notes when you're watching the video lecture. If you're not taking notes, you're really not watching the video uh, carefully enough. The attendance and the participation in class exercises, as I said, will be 15% of the total course grade. 
it is your responsibility to keep up with the daily lectures Monday through Thursday and the discussion forums, which will be uh, posted until 9 p.m. each evening. Forum will be closed at that deadline. If you miss the forum that day, you're absent for that day. We move on. Do not send emails requesting for me to extend the deadline or if I can get back into that and respond. It, it's over. It's done. We're moving on. This is the, this is extremely important. This is the, you have to trust me on this. Everything I do is for a reason. The discussion forum might also be a group exercise that will require some communication or interaction between the students. And even though there's no right or wrong answers to a discussion forum, points could be detracted for repeating the same re response that a previous student has posted. So you'll want to re read the previous posts so that you do not repeat what somebody else has already said. We want to improve the variety of responses. The forum could also be in a pop quiz format to where students would enter the pop quiz and respond in a way that they would not be able to see the other students' responses. That's just going to be a different way of doing it. It's not going to be graded like a test. It's just going to be another way of uh, doing the discussion forum. Now, as far as tests go, there will be three online tests during the, during the course, all posted on Moodle. Each test will cover six chapters each. Each test will be 20% of your grade. So those three tests will account for 60% of your total grade. They will be open book, open note tests, but they will be timed. 35 minutes for each test, which will be challenging. So you'll need to be prepared. This is extremely important. You will need to be prepared before you start the test because you will not have time to just look up answers during the test. I will provide a study guide prior to the test that you can use to prepare before the test starts. The test could include multiple choice, matching, fill in the blank, true, false, short answer, a little bit of everything, as well as short essay questions. Now, these are not meant to be elaborate essays because you have a limited time. So you will want to give me a short paragraph or so that demonstrates some fundamental understanding of what the question is that's being asked. If you just copy and paste a list of bullet points that are shown in the lecture sli slides, that will not be adequate enough. You're going to want to focus in on what the question is asking, elaborate a bit to demonstrate your understanding of that question. Do not copy and paste anything anywhere. This is also very important because this could really destroy your grade for the class. If you do not show up, if you do not take a test on that day and you'll know right now, you'll know exactly when those tests are. We're moving along. It's a six weeks course. The first test is two weeks from now on Thursday. The next test will be two weeks after that on Thursday. And the last test will be two weeks after that on Thursday, the last day of the class. So you will want to keep up and be prepared. And if you miss a test, you'll get zero points for that test. There's no excuse for missing a test because you know right now exactly what day those tests are on that you'll have between 12 noon and 9 p.m. in which to take that test. There should be no excuse for not taking a test. If you miss a test, you'll get a zero. There'll be no makeups, no extra credit. This is extremely important that you understand this. It is your responsibility to communicate with the professor if there's an issue immediately, if not well before. If you have accommodations, they need to be uh, articulated immediately, first day of class. Now, as far as the paper assignment, we'll be talking more about this as we go. Each student will choose a current issue or topic that is relevant to government or politics. Now, that's a pretty broad range, but you're going to want to pick a topic. It could be any social issue out there in the world. But it will obviously need to be an issue that government has to deal with or that affects government in some way. It's not necessarily going to be a topic where you tell me about here's the three branches of government. No, that's what we're going to be learning in class. What you're going to be doing is picking a topic, an issue, some problem in the world that government 
has to deal with or politics gets involved in politics. You'll want to be uh, thinking about that. The one half page summary of that topic will be due Tuesday, June 1st. That's what I need uh, initially is a half page word file that's telling me what the topic is that you want to write about. Again, if, you, if I do not receive that topic summary on the day that it's due, be counted absent for that day. Now, you might be asked to resubmit your summary if it's not clear, if it's not specific, if we need to focus in on a little bit, or if another student has already picked that topic. This is a relatively small class. We should be able to spread out. Everybody chooses a different topic. There's no penalty for that. We're just trying to get those topics locked in as quickly as possible that everybody has a separate topic that they're writing about. Then we move on to the paper, but that's important. You got to get that in on the day that it's due. I'll give you some feedback on it. We'll get those topics locked in and then you can start reading about the topic in these peer reviewed journals and your credible news sources and be preparing for your paper. At some point before the papers do, I'll be asking for a few peer-reviewed academic journal sources that you found thus far in the proper format. Again, I will be bringing you along incrementally on how to do that. Video will be provided on peer-reviewed academic journals. So the, we'll get into the schedule here in a few minutes. The final paper is four and a half pages minimum word file not including your reference page. That will be due on Thursday, June 17th. The papers will be attached to a form that I'll set up in Moodle and they will be attached in a Word file. This is for a reason. Everything I ask you to do is for a reason. I've been teaching this for a long time. That way I can put my comments on that file and email it back to you so you'll have a graded paper with comments on there. The format for all of your writing assignments will be double spaced, 12 point font, Times New Roman, one inch margins. So everything you turn in will have those specific requirements for the formatting. There will be a minimum of six sources for your paper, at least four of which will be from the peer reviewed academic journals. Again, I'll be providing you some more instruction about those, how to find them in the library databases, how to cite them in your uh, reference page, how to make reference to them within the text of your paper. We'll be talking about that. The paper, this is very important. This, this paper is not going to be an editorial of what you think about stuff or what your opinions are of stuff. It will be a critical objective analysis of the topic that you choose, unbiased. You'll be looking at this analytically. A guide, a PDF file guide to writing your paper will be posted with lots of useful information on writing a more interesting, informative paper. It's not for the purpose of expressing your opinions. The paper is to demonstrate what you have learned from your readings, from those credible sources that you have found about your topic. So the bottom line is, you read a lot from these credible sources and then describe what you have learned from your readings. If you do that, you should be in good shape. Tell me what you've learned. Learn a lot and then describe it in your own words. You're not going to copy and paste anything. You're graded with this paper assignment. You're graded on your ability to gather information from these legitimate credible sources and then display your understanding of those in your own words. That's very powerful. That's when learning really occurs is when you read these articles and in some cases they're pretty sophisticated articles, but you're figuring out what they're talking about. What's the issue? What are they studying? How did they study it? How did they measure it? What were their results? What were their conclusions? Then you kind of paraphrase that for me in your paper so you're describing what you've learned about that topic and building an interesting narrative about that issue from what you've learned. The honor code is always in effect. Any form of cheating could result in expulsion 
from the school. You will not communicate any information regarding the test during the test period. Now, prior to the test, I'll have a study guide posted and I'll also have a, a question and answer forum if, if you desire where you, people can come in and ask a question on that Q&A forum and then I can respond so that everybody gets the benefit of that question. But once the test period starts from 12 noon to 9 p.m., there'll be no communication whatsoever. If there's any evidence at all of students communicating or cl collaborating during a test, an investigation will be um, uh, set up and you could be expelled from school. Any suspicious similarities between papers or test answers would warrant an investigation. Your paper will be completely your own work. I will show you how to cite your sources and you will be paraphrasing from your journals that you read from. Be sure to cite those quotes. I'll show you how to do that. Do not copy and paste under any circumstances. Now here's the grade breakdown. As I said, each test is 20% of your grade and that makes up 60% of your total grade. This is extremely important because the test is going to be given on that day. If you do not take the test on that day, you get a zero for that test. We move on. Keep in mind there's no makeups or extra credit for any of the tests. Test one, no makeups or extra credit. Test two, no makeups or extra credit. Test three, last day of class, no makeups, no extensions. This is extremely important because we are planning this course as interactive as we can possibly make it to keep up, just be engaged, to give this class your utmost priority. Papers uh, are 25% of your grade. You want to turn it in on time because if it's late, those late penalties will, will start accruing. And this is extremely important. There will be no incompletes given for this class. You need to keep up and fulfill the requirements within the time required in this class. As I mentioned before, participation grade is 15% of your class. There will be no extensions on any of the forums that you've missed So, because we're moving on. 9, 9 p.m. is the deadline. We move on to the next one. Now, in general, class schedule, each class day is Monday through Thursday. Again, we're going to try to set up a short video conference each Monday. Uh, we're, we're shooting for 2 p.m. Each Monday, I'll send out a WebEx link uh, so that we can all meet together sh for a brief period once a week and talk about what's going to be happening for that week. The deadline to respond to each discussion forum, and of course, you have to watch the video lecture before you do that, is 9 p.m. Any assignments that are due on any particular day are due by 9 p.m. on that day. I'll set up a form for which you attach those two. The deadline to complete the test, as I said, will be 9 p.m. on that day it's scheduled, as we'll see here in a minute. They are every other Thursday. Now let's run through the class schedule very quickly here. First day of class today, we're talking about the uh, course and the uh, syllabus. Uh, tomorrow, we'll be getting into Chapter 1, Politics and Power. The discussion forum will be following that as well. Next day, Chapter 2, Modern Ideologies, Political Philosophy. On Thursday of this week will be Chapter 3, The Modern State. Next week, Monday, will be Chapter 4, Policies of the State. Tuesday will be Chapter 5, Economic Policy of the State. And then on Wednesday, May 26, Chapter 6, justice and effectiveness, and I'll be posting a study guide that day because we are, like I said, we are moving along at a fast clip here. This is a super packed condensed course here on Thursday, um, two weeks from now, Thursday, May 27th, will be test number one covering chapters one through six. That test will be 35 minutes long. You'll have 35 minutes to complete that test in one sitting. You'll have a nine-hour window in which to take that test. So keep in mind that you'll need to start that test. If you're one of these uh, students who wants to leave it till the end as, as far as you can go, well, keep in mind that you're going to need to start that test by 8.25 p.m. in order to get that full 35 minutes 
that's allotted for that test because that test period will shut off completely at 9 p.m. Monday, May 31st is Memorial Day. I'm going to treat that just like a regular holiday. So we'll come back on Tuesday, June 1st. I'll be posting a video on writing your paper and your paper topic will be due that day. All I need that day is a half page summary on a Word file telling me what topic you'd like to write about. So you've got basically two weeks here to be thinking about a topic that you want to write about. Turn it in that day. I'll give you some feedback as soon as possible so we can get those topics locked in. Wednesday, June 2nd, Chapter 7, Democracies and Authoritarian Systems. I'm also going to be posting that video that I mentioned that talks about the peer-reviewed academic journals. You have to watch both of those that day. Then Chapter 8, Political Culture and Socialization. June 7th, Chapter 9, Constitutions and the Design of Government. On June 8th, Tuesday, Chapter 10, I'm posting two video lectures that day. So this will be a uh, condensed day. Be watching two video lectures that day. Chapter 10, Elections. Chapter 11, Parties. On that day, I'm also going to want a, a couple of samples of peer-reviewed academic journals in the proper format so that I can see your progress on that and give you some feedback on that that, the, that we're actually finding some peer-reviewed journals and that they are cited in the proper format. So that looks like that's going to be a busy day. Chapter 12, Wednesday, June 9th, is on interest groups. A study guide will also be posted that day because on Thursday, June 10th, will be test number two covering chapters 7 through 12. Again, test will be 35 minutes. You'll take that in one sitting. You'll have a nine-hour window from 12 noon to 9 p.m. in which to take that 35-minute test. The next week, we're looking at Chapter 13, Social Movements. I'm also going to be posting another article along with that about the Occupy Wall Street movement. Next day will be Chapter 14, Parliamentary Government. Chapter 15, Presidential Governments. Then on Thursday, June 17th, I'll be posting a video on finalizing your paper. After you watch that short video, your paper is due that day by 9 p.m. deadline that day. This is one week before the end of class. This gives me a chance to look at the papers and hopefully have them graded by the last day of class. So your paper is due on this day, June 17th, Thursday, in a Word file, four and a half pages, on Monday, the next week, final week of class, Chapter 16, Bureaucracy, Public Sector. Then we'll be looking at Chapter 17, Law and the Courts. Wednesday, June 23rd, will be Chapter 18, Global Politics. And then June 24th, Thursday is the last day of the class. That's when test number three will be given. That's covering Chapters 13 through 18. Again, you'll have a nine-hour window from 12 noon to 9 p.m. in which to take that test. You'll have 35 minutes to complete that test in one sitting. Okay, so that covers the syllabus in, uh, in detail. You'll want to read that regular so that you'll uh, be keeping up with the course on a daily basis. Check your email on a daily basis and uh, check in on Moodle, obviously, every day in order to fill the requirements of the course. So. As I mentioned before, I'm going to try to have a short video conference each Monday afternoon. We're shooting for 2 p.m., and that way we can just uh, get a little face-to-face -face time here interactively, talk about what's uh, coming up for that week of the class. So hopefully I will be seeing you then.